Championship Monday here for the Lawrence Bassmaster Elite at the Harris Chain of Lakes. And my guest got here any way possible. Left the water, couldn't get in in the boat. And as you can see, he is almost here. And I can't wait to introduce to you, you to him because we have a spectacular sunny day here in beautiful Leesburg, Florida. And it is time to decide who will be the third Elite Series champion of 2024. We've already had one rookie champion and one and two, both Elite Series rookies trying to battle it out. KJ Queen been here for a few years, but man, he's trying to take out the guy who he roomed with at Bethel University. Where are we fishing this week? Well, if it's your first day tuning in, let me tell you the Harris Chain of Lakes in the great state of Florida. Two back-to-back -back events in the Sunshine State. After this, we head to Palacca, Florida for Rick Clunn's 500th Bassmaster event. And I am joined by digital editor from Bassmaster, host of... I I mean, he calls you a co-host, but I say you are the host of the Bassmaster podcast, in my opinion. Kyle, Jesse, thanks for doing this. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. You, you know, you mentioned uh, getting off the water and doing anything necessary. Really, it was an easy decision because any reason to, you know, skedaddle a little bit early and uh, and uh, head back to the media trailer is uh, good for me. Hope Steve Bowman's not watching, but uh, otherwise, uh, happy to be here. <laughs> well, good to have you. How amazing is it to look at this incredible rookie class. I mean, better than we ever imagined, and we thought they were going to be good. But before we talk about that, let's jump into our Toyota Midday Report. He was once a rookie. Rookie no more. Jordan Lee, two-time classic champion, back at Bass, and boy, two top tens out of three. Yeah, had a, had a great start. Obviously, the first two events, like you mentioned, how well he did there. Um, you know, the crazy thing is that only had him in, what, I think top 10, barely in the top 10 coming into this event in progressive AOI point. Um, you know, I got the chance to be around him this morning. I wasn't necessarily covering him, but he was in the same general area that JT Tompkins was. And as you saw in one of the first clips there, he had, you know, a few few boats watching him and uh, they were having a good time over there, getting some early bites offshore. And right before we get off the water, we got to see him throw a frog up in the uh, Popka Canal, which was which was a good time, which uh, which we would have got to see him catch one. But uh, he's, he's, he's getting after it this morning. Jordan Lee has been a phenom since he joined this sport, I mean, it, it, he was one of those highly talked, kind of like our tournament leader, day three leader, John Garrett. Everybody talked about him coming into this, but this sneaky surprise from Maine, the main event, Tyler Williams, quickly becoming a fan favorite in his second top 10. There's no question. And, you know, I had the chance to cover Tyler in a nation event, would have been three years ago at Lake Erie. Um, and he was wearing, you know, he kind of went a little viral there. He's wearing an off him hat, not an on him hat. He was <laughs> off him. Well, it turns out he wasn't off him. He was, uh, he was catching him just, just fine and ended up almost winning that event uh you know another top 10 here for tyler um you know how can you not like this kid always smiling always having a good time never taking anything too seriously as you can always tell uh and i know uh i know you're high on this kid for sure yeah and he the amazing thing is he, i've yet to see him feel the moment like being in, in an environment where you're like okay it's the first day of the classic he just giggles his way through this and a free and fluid angler like that is a scary angler. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, the, the more free and, and just having a good time you can, you know, you can be in that mindset, that's that's going to, you know, help propel your, your entire career. I mean, when you don't put too much pressure on yourself, it's always a good thing. A lot of pressure in your first top 10, which he had a few years ago. Forgot to gas up that time, but he had a full tank of gas this morning, KJ Queen. And I heard he was the first angler here this morning, beat Craig Lamb to the boat <laughs> ramp, which is nearly impossible to do. You would basically have to camp out overnight. Uh, but, yeah, KJ uh, definitely grown a lot in that time period. Um, you know, had the opportunity to cover KJ on the college series. And like you said, this, you know, this youth movement is certainly a real thing. And um, it's crazy to think KJ is not necessarily one of the younger guys anymore that's in the top 10 when you consider, you know, the Tyler Williams, the Trey McKinney's of the world. Um, you know, just an outstanding angler. And, you know, that just shows how good Bethel is because I know it's been talked about a lot, but, even at Bethel, he wasn't necessarily the, you know, top angler. I mean, the, the depth that they had with Cody Huff, Tristan McCormick, all those guys, really, really impressive. Speaking of impressive, our reigning EQ Angler of the Year, JT Tompkins, I joked with him yesterday. I'm like, all these rookies making top 10, about time you showed up. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, you know, I got to cover JT this morning. That's who I was with the majority of the time. It was a slow morning for him. Obviously, that big fish on the glide bait was right at the boat, and I think that shocked him. 
in this area that he started in, the one thing that I did notice and I could kind of overhear him saying was that, you know, there was a lot of short strikes. They were falling it to the boat, weren't committing to it, getting the back hook. He lost a really big one um, shortly after the glide bait catch, made a move, you know, started fishing some brush piles, I assume, based on the fact that he picked up the jig and, and uh, started going to work there a little bit. JT Tompkins, part of that rookie class, and they're really just, they're, they're gypsies. They're, they're bass fishing gypsies. Last week, they were all at Murray because the cutoff's coming up for pre-fishing there. They do not spend any time not on the water, but, but probably the most mature of our rookies. Remove Billet Milliken from the mix, but, but our tournament leader actually has a child, actually has not go. just a girlfriend. Half of them don't have girlfriends, never mind wives, and that is John Garrett. But he uh -oh. has had dealt with trials and tribulations to get here. It was not an easy route for him to arrive. Absolutely not. Yeah, I think, you know, baby. most people, most normal, yes. you know, individuals that had that such a good though. opportunity to make the Elite Series multiple times and falling just short, I think that would really take back a lot of people. I know, I know anglers in the past, you know, you get that close and you almost just want to take a year off because you feel like, how much closer can I possibly get without doing it? You know, that didn't get in John's way. Obviously qualified last year and making his mark early on this year. An incredible angler and had so many near misses. When he fished the Classic back in 2016, there's, there's certain collegiate champions that come along and you're like, I will be seeing you again. And in three events into his Elite Series career, he is proving that to be a fact. But I can't, I mean, it, it looks like he's in control of this tournament, but the door is still open. And remember what happened last time he was here. He was leading AOI and then JT Tompkins came up and played the boogeyman. Right. Yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully in his mind, I'm thinking he hopes that doesn't happen this go-around. Of course, yeah. Talked to his grandparents this morning. They were telling me when he was four years old, he used to hoist trophies and announce himself as Bassmaster Classic Champion. It's wild, Kyle. That's, I, think, I think that's why all the anglers feel good when they get here. Because they live this life being... I mean, it's an outsider sport. I mean, it's quickly that's changing but 20 years ago i mean it, if you were into this this that was weird you were the weird guy well then you come to the elite series and you're like hey there's there's others like me <laughs> yeah no kidding yeah i mean he got off to a quick start this morning i think that's going to help him out tremendously uh dalton tumblin was with him this morning shooting photos and definitely uh definitely a quick start All right, talk about that right now. Well, guys, it is looking pretty awful here right now. It is totally different than the past three days. All the fish are off the bottom and there's just hundreds, just the whole water column is, is fish and, um, if it were just bass, I'd be fine because I could pick them off, you know, suspended. But there's so many gar and tilapia and stuff. It's all they're all off the bottom. I don't know what happened here. I don't know if something happened to the water, made them get off the bottom or what. But um, definitely different. I'm seeing very few fish relating um, to the bottom. So this is the first time in you know, this week that I even thought about leaving this place. I could just tell that, I mean, they could all suck to the bottom and start biting. I, I really don't know, but I've gave them a while and uh, they have not, have not made their way down there. So I'm not sure what, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna scan, um, scan this area, see if they moved out a little deeper or up and down the bank. Um, and if I don't see a nice pretty little wad of them, we'll probably be doing something else the rest of the day. I, I'm not, I know I'm not in terrible shape. I mean, but I, I need one more good bite to I think for sure win. Cause JT's gonna, he's gonna catch him a nice little satchel of bass today for sure. Um, and I got a decent lead, but I need, I need another pound or two probably for to have a chance to win. So I think I'm gonna scan right now. I've done talk myself into it. Done fish through my area three or four times and 
haven't took a bite. So we're gonna do that right now. Yeah, many of them. Um, I don't know. I mean, I did what I, what I thought to do to catch a big bag. And generally, you know, when you go for a big bag, uh, you always stand a chance of, of not catching them too. And they just haven't bit. <clears throat> they really hadn't bit all week down here. Um, you know, but I really didn't have, like I said, didn't have anything to lose. And things actually, as far, you know, as far as the week has gone, actually worked out my way because my practice was, anybody that knows me knows I like to flip. And this is probably the top five best flipping bites I've ever seen in my life down here in practice. And uh, I just got a bad boat draw day one which is mid-pack, which puts me mid-pack day two, and the lock had been taking an hour in practice. So in reality, everything worked out because if I would have had a good boat draw, I would have came here, because these fish haven't bit all week. Anybody has been down here really hasn't caught them. Um, so I wouldn't be here for more than likely fishing today. But I had to come. I mean, they haven't bit since the big storm. And I figured, you know, they bit a little bit yesterday, but it was a lot of little fish. Had a couple of decent bites, and I was just hoping that uh, maybe today would be the day that they finally turned on, everything settled down in the area from the big high winds and storm and stuff, and that they would start to bite. But it just hadn't been the case. Um, I've actually gotten very few bites down here today, and I'm not gonna stay any longer. I mean, I don't have a lot of time to left even when I go back and lock, but I mean, I can't get a bite. I cannot generate a bite down here. And I've, I've tried everything. I've switched up weights, uh, moving base, I've done it all. And I just can't get bit, so switched up areas. I've seen a lot of fish. You can still see it. I mean, they're in the area. They just, they're in a, they're in a foul mood for some reason. I don't know what's, what's going on, but that's part of it. I mean, that's the way it goes. I definitely wasn't gonna move up and sure as heck wasn't gonna win if I'd have stayed, uh, stayed close, because that's where I've been fishing all week, and I just didn't have much left down there. So I thought it was all gonna work out in my favor. If I could make it to day three and four, come down here and fish fresh fish that I had not fished for all week, and really, you know, bust some giant bags and put this thing away, but that's just not the way, it, you know, not the way it's panned out. But that's Brad Watley, stereotypical swinging for the fences. And I think that gets overused. Obviously, you hear it way too much. It tastes much better than I didn't catch him today. But that's truly what you see. He was in a perfect spot to swing. Absolutely. I mean, when you're when you're in the bottom half of the top 10, uh, you know, you need to make a big move. Obviously, the lead that John Garrett had coming into the final day you know what you need to have to even have a chance so um you know if he he felt like that bite was going to give him the best chance to do it then you know you, you really have no choice but to go making his first top 10 joseph webster been here for three years been close before but it's great to have him fishing in our final 10 anglers it's, a, it's postcard fishing though you see that and you're like i i i want to do that I found myself yesterday when I was covering him, just shooting photos of the trees oh, and things down. around. Get in there. Yes. Golly. What's this world coming to? <laughs> Bam. It's gotta be close to uh, something. Something. That's more than two and a half, you'd think. Well, we talked about this morning that, that there's a two hour window and it's just not, it's just not happened yet. And, you know, I'm kind of, I got one bullet in my gun and 
I'm just going to, I mean, I'm going to stick with it. I, and hopefully that two hour window, you know, still happens, but they just, they have not got on the outside. And I don't know if it's boat traffic, you know, the boat traffic, there was a lot of boat traffic yesterday. And even though we didn't have any wind, it gets that grass washing back and forth. And a lot of times I feel like they move to the outside when it does that. So, I mean, I know I can go to the bank and catch fish, but I mean, it'd be, I, I'd be lucky to catch a big one. And I just feel like if I get, if I hit the right stretch on this, which I've done it two days in a row, you can catch them quick, but this hasn't happened yet. Um, haven't gotten any big bites Jason at all. I've caught been several fish on that wind. within that uh, were just around two pounds, and uh, I've left down there at the uh, lower end of Apopka, and I'm right now up in the Apopka Canal. And uh, I'm gonna fish here for a couple of minutes and then probably lock back through and hopefully go catch a couple of, uh, couple of bigger fish on brush piles. But uh, today has not panned out the way I wanted it to, but I did have a lot of fun so far. It was, it was a lot of fun catching that limit early on a buzz bait and, uh, and catching those flipping fish. That's always fun. Ed Lochran has had multiple top tens before now, but uh, sure it's fun. I mean, Mondays are better when you're actually bass fishing. There's no doubt about that. One of, one of the interesting things I just noticed there, you know, from being out on the water is a lot of those guys that are fishing shallow, fishing the bank, they're really relying on shade. And you saw that with Joseph Webster. Um, you know, a high, bright, sunny day a lot of times will help that bite because it, you know, provides more sun, obviously. Uh, Jason being able to catch them out off that, you know, the outside edge of the grass, that's, that's really interesting because this week a lot of guys I've seen on the water, Brandon Lester, Joseph Webster, you know, they're basically ignoring that outer edge of the grass. So that's... Uh, you know, like you said, obviously needing a little bit of wind this morning and this afternoon, but it doesn't look like he's going to get it. Well, the barrister enjoying another championship Sunday appearance. Great to have him on camera and all of our top 10. We started with 102, 50 went out yesterday, 10 went out today, which will return as our third champion of the season, John Garrett. Has a big lead going into today, but as you can see, that lead is getting tighter and tighter. Who do we got to watch, Kyle? Got to watch out for KJ Queen, I'm saying, just based on seeing him last, yesterday afternoon. He could get, go down. Discover the Dakota Lithium DL Plus 135 amp hour battery. With dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1,000 cold cranking amps, 